Good afternoon. Uh, as we begin, I want to, uh, I'm, we're going to begin with a video that we put together. I'd ask someone to dim the lights for us, okay? So uh, dim the lights, and, and I want us to begin with a video. I spent a <clears throat> good bit of time putting that together, and every time I was putting the parts together, that disturbed me so much. It really, really bothers me. It hurts me. There was a Kim Dao, a 21-year-old 20 year girl, living a dream, international model, Paris, New York, Milan, Seoul. She was living a life that so many young ladies especially would want to live. And yet she was living with pain. She was, in, she was hurting. And she made a decision that to, in order to escape her pain, that she, after she left here in Korea, she went to Paris. And she went into her apartment in Paris, and as she contemplated, and those were entries from her blog. Her blog, the, the title was that I like to fork myself. I don't know if you're, the younger generation is into cutting, hurting themselves. Some of her blog entries, I left Seoul and I'm in Paris, I'm happy. No more running away from something or someone or myself. November the 5th, I have already accepted that I relate to nothing. The more I gain, the more lonely it is. I know I'm like a ghost. November 18, say hi to forever. November 19, 19th, this girl goes into her apartment goes into her closet and she hangs herself. This uh, bothers me so much. Even in America, the suicide rate uh, is highest among Asians. And among Asians, actually, it's the highest among Koreans. You know, here in Korea, you have the highest suicide rate in the industrialized world. Uh, I mean, even a former president killed himself. You've had billionaires, billionaires jump out the seventh floor of, the, of their uh, office building, kill themselves. You've had actresses. And, and you see this, here's a girl just at the very beginning of her life, and already she's made a choice, a terrible choice to take her own life. It reminds me, when I hear this story, it reminds me of uh, the Bible, John, chap John chapter 10, verse 10. John 10, 10. And that's where we can start the PowerPoint. John 10, 10. And that's where Jesus said, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came, Jesus speaking, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The thief, the Satan, Satan convinced that girl that the only way out for her is to take her own life. And I hate that. I hate that. Because Jesus came that we may have life. Now, if we're going to understand what Jesus is saying here in John chapter 10, we have to look at the context. The context of John chapter 10 is that he's speaking to uh, Jewish people. And he's speaking to them in a parable. And he includes three types of characters, a shepherd, sheep, and thieves. Shepherd, sheep, and thieves. In John chapter 10, verses 1 and 2, this is, how, this is Jesus speaking as he teaches the people. He says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the fold of the sheep but climbs up some other way, he is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Where the sheep were kept at that time was in an enclosure, either of mud or either of stones. There was only one door, only one door, one entrance, one exit. 
And so the shepherd, the shepherd is responsible for his sheep. He would quite often sleep there by the, do- by the door to protect his sheep. Remember, there wasn't any electricity. It's dark. On a cloud, uh, cloudy day or cloudy night, you know, you can't see. There's no moonlight. It's dark. So the shepherd is there to, to be with his sheep. One thing that Jesus is saying here is that the one that you can identify who is who by, by how they come. The shepherd comes by the door. He belongs there. The thief, what does he do? He climbs over the wall. He comes in. And we can identify who the character is by the way they come. Jesus is speaking again to Jewish people. And he's talking about the broader themes of good and evil. He's talking about, uh, he's talking about good and evil and good religious teaching and bad religious teaching. And the sheep are the innocent characters, are the innocent that need care and protection. In John chapter 10, verse 7, Jesus again continues speaking, and he, says to, he said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. I am the door of the sheep. Now, I'm, somebody talk to me. I'm lonely up here. Okay, Ilbin, tell me, what's the purpose of a door? Now, you're so smart, I know, but I'll give you an easy question. What's the purpose of a door? Okay, get into it. Uh, the door. The door, it controls who can come and who can't. You open the door, go in. You shut the door, it keeps others out, right? Jesus is saying, I am the door of the sheep. He's comparing himself to the, the door of the sheep pen. Now he's changing, he's changing the terminology. I am the door of the sheep pen. It sounds a little strange, but oftentimes the shepherds would sleep right there by the door. They would be right with the sheep to protect them. They were with them. They would control who would come and who would go. Essentially, the shepherd was serving the function of a door. So Jesus said, I am the door of the sheep. In verse 9, John chapter 10, verse 9, Jesus said again, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be what? Saved. He will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Jesus continues with a metaphor. I am the door. And then he makes a promise. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved. Now salvation here is described from the sheep's perspective. Okay? The sheep's perspective. Now, what does a sheep need what, what does a sheep need to live? Somebody tell me. Hard question more. Somebody. Rachel, what does a sheep need to live? Grass. What else? Water. What else? What does a shepherd do for a sheep? He protects. Leads, the shepherd leads the sheep where the good grass is, where the water is. He also protects. You think about the shepherds, the examples of shepherds in the Bible. David, I killed a lion, I killed a bear. Others, there was wild animals there protecting the sheep. And Jesus says, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out, in and out, and find pasture. Jesus' message to the people is that he is a source of salvation. He is the door, the gateway through which a a person can enjoy the benefits of salvation. There's two things I like about this verse. One is salvation is available to, to anyone. It says, if anyone enters through me, if anyone enters through me, in Korean we say what? Nam yo no so. Nam yo no so. Nam ja. Men, women, elderly, young, anyone. Nugadunji, anyone enters through me, he, uh, he can be saved. And then also the second part is it's a promise. It's not can be saved. He says he will be saved. Can God tell a lie? Can God tell a lie? Is that true? 
God is making a promise. Jesus is making a promise here. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved. And we can trust God to keep his promises. Now this brings us to John chapter 10, verse 10, our passage for today. In Jesus now, he is comparing himself in this verse. He says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Now the contrast. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The title of our message today is The Abundant Life. The Abundant Life. Jesus says, the thief came only to steal and kill and destroy. That's his purpose. That's his purpose. Jesus gave his purpose. My purpose is to give life. I came that they may have life. The Greek word is zoe. Zoe is talking about a spiritual life. Okay, are you alive? Are you alive? Let's do a little medical check, okay? I always want to be a doctor, all right? All right, right hand. Stick out your right hand, okay? Everybody, right hand. And two fingers, all right? Two fingers. Now, you take your two fingers, and I want you to put it on the side of your neck here. Do you have a pulse? Do you have a pulse? Are you alive? Are you sure? Jesus said, I've come that they may have life. Men and women, you may be physically alive, but you are not spiritually alive until you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I came that they may have Zoe, life, spiritual life. And then he goes on and says, and, and have it abundantly, abundantly. Again, the title of the sermon today is Abundant Life. We, we have this mentality of what, what, salvation. We, we become a Christian and we, we, uh, we, we trust God's word and we, we have salvation. And, you know, we think about, oh, gosh, I'm just going to hold on tight. You know, you ever get on the roller coaster? And first thing you do is just grip that bar. I'm going to just hold on tight and I'm just going to sur- try to survive life. And then finally, oh, I'm going to go to heaven and everything will be okay. No, that's the wrong perspective, wrong theology. Jesus said, I I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. We talked uh, the other night, talking about salvation and what it it meant. Someone mentioned, well, I'm, I'm just ready to go. I'm ready to go to heaven. Well, you know what? Jesus, he prayed for his disciples. And when Jesus was going back to heaven, he prayed for them. And he said, he's praying to God, he said, I don't pray that you take them out of the world. I pray that you leave them here. Why? Because you and I can do things for, for God on this earth that, guess what, we can't do in heaven. You, your life has meaning and purpose. God has a plan for your life. You serve Him here. You accomplish His will here. Sure, you'll go to heaven. But God wants you to have an abundant life here on earth. Now, we talk about that, the abundant life. What does it mean? It's kind of an abstract concept. So, recently, I asked a group of of Christians. I asked a group of Christians, what does it mean to them to have a relationship with Christ? What does it mean for them to have a relationship with Christ? In other words, I asked them, what were the benefits of being a Christian? And I want to read to you what they said. Here are some of the answers that I got. We have confidence that God will guide us. Therefore, we don't have to worry about the future. God is in control. We are never alone. God is a constant companion, a friend, someone who loves us and whom we can love. We have the great gift of God's peace an emotional calmness that is not dependent upon the circumstances around us. We can have a positive outlook towards life because God has a great future planned for us. We can have the quality of patience. We learn how to endure difficult circumstances and difficult people. We learn to forgive others. We learn to emotionally let go of a situation when we we were wronged. 
We learn to overcome our fears. We have a supernatural emotional security because God is present in our lives, caring for us. We discover the real meaning of life. God teaches us new truths that we did not know as we begin to live for him. We have the confidence that God will provide for all our physical and emotional needs. We learn what true love is, God's unconditional agape love. We receive the gift of eternal life. In other words, the relationship that we begin with God on earth will continue in heaven throughout eternity. God loves us so much that he wants us to have a permanent relationship with him. Finally, God helps us with our present problems. God cares for us and is always ready to aid us and assist us in solving the challenges that we may encounter. Now, these are all answers that my friends gave me, talking about the practical meaning of the abundant life. But there's someone else whose opinion I value as well, and his name is the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23, and he basically answered the very same question. And he, uh, he spoke about what, it, what were the natural benefits of having a personal relationship with God. He is describing the behavioral traits that God produces within us when we are in right relationship with him. Paul said this, but uh, the fruit of the Spirit is love, say love, P, uh, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. These are the traits that will naturally be a part of our lives if, if we are in right relationship with God. This is a ministry of God, the Holy Spirit, that lives inside us once we receive Christ. Let's look at each one of these a little bit. Love, love, agape love. It's, that word love, there was other, uh, other words love used in the Greek, but in the Bible, the word agape love come, is, is used quite often. And it, it talks about a, a love that is unconditional, a love that is not dependent. Use, our human love, you be nice to me, I'll be nice to you. You like me, I'll like you. Well, God's love is completely different. Jesus, at that time, the Jewish people were persecuted. They were under the authority of Rome. And yet Jesus, in the, in, in the, the Jews desperately wanted their independence. There was even terrorism there. If you look at, if you look at the, the, name of the, the names of the disciples, one of which was Simon the Zealot, the, the, the Greek word for zealot, the, the actual root, comes from the word meaning terror. Simon the terrorist. Simon the insurrectionist. He was one of Christ's disciples. And yet Jesus told these Hebrew people, he said what? Love your enemies. Love your enemies. Do good to those who persecute you. Love your neighbor, ought to kill. Love your neighbor as yourself. As yourself. Love. Joy. Joy. This inner contentment that is not based upon circumstances. This, you, you can't call it happiness, but, but it's an assurance that God is with you. This, this joy, and it's, again, it's not depend, dependent upon what's taking place around you. Peace, I'll say more about that in a minute. Patience. Do you realize that you're living in the most impatient place on earth? Acha. I go, Bali, Bali, Ajima, Bali. You're living in the most impatient place on earth. You know that, right? Patience. This is, a, this is what God teaches. It, it shows us how to calm down, to be able to listen, to be able to, you know the word yangbo? Yangbo. Be able to yield. You go first. It's okay. Relax. Patience. Kindness. Kindness. In our inner relationships with others, just being kind, being nice. 
showing practically just a, a value for the other person, goodness, making the right choices. We all are faced with all kinds of choices, right and wrong. Well, God, the Holy Spirit, helps us to make the correct choices, the right choices, faithfulness, being true to your commitments, being a person of honor, a person of your word, a person that people can depend upon, gentleness, okay? Again, we're, we're, you're, this is another challenge for Koreans, gentleness. When you come to the intersection and there's a car, you know, okay, who, who wins? You get in an argument, who wins? Well, whoever can shout the, you know, bring up the most emotion and shout the hardest and shout the longest and all that. No, gentleness. Gentleness. You think about Proverbs, that what? A gentle answer turns away much wrath. Gentleness, kindness, treating others the way you would want to be treated. Self-control. We desperately need this. All of us have weak points in our, in our characters, and we, we need to be able to keep ourselves under control, and God helps us to do that. There's two other verses that I want to mention in regard to the aspect of peace, uh, the, fruit of, the fruit of the Spirit, peace. And I want you to listen to what Jesus had to say in John 14, verse 27. John 14, 27. Jesus speaking to his disciples. And he says this, Peace I leave with you. I'm going to heaven. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives it. it get, not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. Peace, Jesus speaking to his disciples, peace I leave with you. Whose peace? My peace. My peace. Say that with me. My peace. Who is my here? Jesus. Who is Jesus? 100% God, 100% man. My peace, God's peace, he says, I give to you. Now you tell me, what's more valuable than that? What's more valuable than that? God's peace. Our creator, our sustainer, the one that cares over, watches over our lives, that cares for us, that loves us. He says, you can have my peace. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give it to you. You want to find peace? Well, you go to what? Sojom. You go to the bookstore, and you go to the self-help section, right? And you find out what the latest fad is, the latest philosophy, the latest trend, and then you'll have peace, right? No. Jesus says that, he says, I don't give my peace as the world, as the world gives it. No. My peace I give to you. Sonmul. It's a present. It's special. And he says, do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. In John 16, verse 33, he goes on and he says this, speaking to his disciples, these things I have spoken to you so that, next words, what are they? So that in me you may have what? In me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation. But take courage, I have overcome the world. These things I've spoken to you that in me, Jesus says in me, you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation. The, 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 the word in Greek actually literally means tribulation, pressure, stress. That's what it means. Anyone here have pressure, stress? Jesus says you can have his peace. In me, you, you may have peace. And then he tells the disciples, and he tells you and I, take courage. I have overcome the world. In other words, your problems are not so big that I can't help you with them. You can have peace in the midst of everything, uh, everything falling apart, going crazy, difficulty. Just recently, two of my close friends had mothers that passed away. And I prayed for them. And I asked God, give them your peace. 
And as I went to funeral services, you know what I saw? I saw that God answered my prayer. And in the midst of a turmoil, and of course we, we, we love our, our fathers, but when mothers die, there is always a special connection there emotionally. In the midst of, of emotional turmoil, God's peace was there, and I saw that. And I had to thank God. Thank you for answering my prayers. So when I heard about Dao Kim, and then as I, I knew I wanted to say something, and, and I searched videos, and I saw the videos, and you heard her own testimony. Young girl, she says, I want to have houses every, everywhere. One day I want to be a mom. And yet Satan convinced that girl, whatever problem she faced, to go into her closet and to kill herself. What a shame that Dao Kim did not know the words of Jesus. What a shame that Dao Kim did not believe the words of Jesus. If she did, she'd be alive today. Satan convinced that girl that there was no hope, that if there was no solutions to her problems. The only way out for her, the only way to for her to end her pain was to take her own life. And it's such a tragic mistake for our young people here. And it's, it, Korea is a wonderful place. This is, but, however, this is one of the most horrible aspects of Korean society, that suicide is almost glamorized. For our young people here, don't even think about it. You are never in a situation where God Almighty cannot help you. Amen? God wants you to have an abundant life right now. Now, here on earth. He wants you to experience all of Himself here. Sure, there's difficulties, pain, trials, tribulations. But He is ready to walk with you through each and every one of those trials and all the glories of heaven await. Let's bow our heads in prayer. I don't know what kind of difficulties you may be facing in your life. It may be personal. It may be work-related. It may be something with relationships. It might may be something in your family. It could be financial or just anxiety over the future. Dao Kim made a mistake. Dao Kim made a mistake when she took her life last month. Satan led her to do that. God loves you. God has a wonderful plan for your life. And God will help you in the midst of your difficulties. God will help ease your pain. God will heal your heart, your soul, your mind, your emotions. God can do anything if you'll come to him. If anyone's here feels hopeless, I want to tell you that there's hope and there's a loving God that's ready to receive you.